the M1070 tractor and M1000 trailer. Because of the importance of this vehicle, both the tractor and the semi-trailer must be well maintained and serviced before, during, and after operation. The new heavy equipment transporter system, the M1070 tractor and M1000 trailer, a new generation of advanced transport for tracked vehicles and military equipment, setting the latest standards of performance and cost efficiency for the U.S. Army. The head is essential to the Army's ability to provide integrated support to our troops across the spectrum of conflict. With increased mobility over the old system, it can transport the M1 series main battle tank and other heavy equipment weighing in excess of 70 tons. Because of the importance of this vehicle, both the tractor and the semi-trailer must be well maintained and serviced before, during, and after operation. Preventive maintenance checks and services for the head begin at the left front side of the M1070 tractor and continues counterclockwise around the M1000 trailer. Don't forget to keep your manual with you at all times, referring to it throughout the PMCS. Before Operation PMCS should start with a visual inspection of the left front exterior of the cab. Look for any obvious damage that would impair operation. Remember, the vehicle access ladder may need to be used for some PMCS checks. You'll also need to check the condition of the windshield as well as the windshield wipers, wiper arms, and blades. Then check the radiator sight glass. Add coolant if there is no coolant visible. Look underneath the tractor for any signs of fluid leakage. If there are leaks, try to determine the location and cause. If you have any doubt, contact your supervisor or unit maintenance. Visually inspect the left side tires for possible underinflation. Don't operate the truck with an underinflated tire or a questionable defect. Failure to comply may result in premature tire failure and even injury or death to personnel. Check the fuel water separator for any leaks or damage. Remember that fuel is very flammable and can explode easily. Be sure to keep fuel away from open fire and keep a fire extinguisher within easy reach. Also, don't work on the fuel system when the engine is hot as fuel can be ignited by a hot engine. The fifth wheel then needs to be inspected. Make sure the primary and secondary lock release handles are pushed completely in. Make sure that the service coupling and emergency coupling are securely connected to the trailer, that the intervehicular electrical cable is securely connected and has no obvious damage and that the trailer air brake hoses, the relay valve, and air reservoirs don't have any leaks. Visually inspect all components of the left side and rear exterior for any damage that could impair operation. Before operation PMCS then continues with inspections of the M1000 semi-trailer. First, check the step sections and guard rails for secure mounting and missing hardware. Inspect the cable guide rollers for proper lubrication and freedom of movement. Then check the davit assembly for secure mounting. Make sure the cable isn't damaged, that the hand winch is operating properly, and that the cable guide is secured by the hitch pin. 
Make certain that the spare wheel assembly is present and securely mounted. And check the spare tires for tread wear, cuts, and weather deterioration. Next, inspect the two electrical connectors, as well as the glad hands for secure mounting and damage. And listen for air leaks. Then check the pivot pin, making sure the two locking pins and attaching hardware are in place and secure. And check the cable guide pulley for wear, cracks, or binding. Inspect the front support leg wells and the attaching mounting hardware. Remove the linch pin and retaining pin and operate the hand crank to ensure proper operation. Check the gooseneck pivot cylinders for damage, missing hardware and leaks, including the hydraulic cylinder, line fracture valve, and hydraulic lines. Next, look up the storage compartment door hinges and latch for damaged or missing parts, and inventory the BII, the basic issue items. Be sure to replace any BII that is damaged or missing. Check the brake valve for leaks, damage, or missing hardware. Push in the valve handle, then pull out the handle to make sure the brakes engage. Inspect the cargo transport tie-down rings and payload tie-down rings for damage or corrosion. While moving around the semi-trailer, inspect each tire for cuts, defects, and signs of unusual tread wear. Check the valve stems and make sure that all lug nuts are present and tight. Strike the tires with a blunt object to identify any flat or underinflated tires. Inspect all ten assemblies of the suspension system, including the upper and lower suspension arms, the axle, dual wheel assemblies, suspension cylinder, dust covers, and service parking brake chamber for leaks, damage, and missing parts. Also, check the suspension isolation valves and line fittings for leaks, damage, and missing parts. Make sure the valve handle is pushed in toward the center of the trailer. Next, inspect the steering installation. Be sure that no one goes under the semi-trailer if the platform is raised, unless all support legs have been lowered or a serious injury could result. Check the four steering plates, all longitudinal struts, connecting links, and two fixed linkages for brakes and secure mounting. Also check the steering cylinders and hydraulic lines for leaks, defects, and secure mounting. Inspect the rear support legs, welds, and mounting hardware. Operate the hand crank to ensure proper operation and make sure the protective covers are in place. Then make sure the rear support legs are fully retracted and secured in a raised position. Inspect the loading ramps, tie down chains and load binders, the ramp spring and guide rod assembly and pivot shafts for damage. Lower and raise the ramps to check for proper operation. Then make sure the ramps are raised and the tie-down chains and load binders are secured. Check the snatch block for obvious damage and secure mounting. Make sure the linch pin is properly installed to secure the keeper pin. Then make sure the snatch block is in the stow position and secured. The tires and wheels, payload and cargo tie-down rings, the suspension system, and steering installation also need to be checked on the right side of the semi-trailer.
Then the APU must be inspected. When checking for leaks, be sure to wear protective gloves. And never open any type of fluid holding tanks while the APU is still hot. Severe burns from spraying hot fluids could result. Always give the system time to cool before attempting to make any fluid checks. For accurate readings, make sure both the gooseneck and platform are at the normal running height before checking fluid levels on the semi-trailer. Check the APU coolant level. If the level is low, fill the radiator as needed. Also, check the cooling system for leaks, and check coolant for contamination. Next, check the APU oil level. Add oil if needed, and inspect for oil leaks. Inspect the hydraulic tank for leaks and secure mounting. Check the hydraulic fluid level. Open and close the hydraulic valve, checking for leaks and erratic operation. Make sure the valve is in the open position. Check the APU fuel tank. If fuel isn't visible on the sight gauge, remove the cap and screen and look inside the tank. If the fuel is low, fill as needed. Visually inspect the sediment bowl on the fuel filter assembly for contaminants and water. If contaminants are found, notify unit maintenance. Inspect the APU engine for proper mounting to the APU frame. Next, check the APU battery. Remember that battery acid is harmful to your skin and eyes. Always wear protective goggles to prevent injury. And be sure not to wear watches, rings, or other jewelry while servicing the battery. This could short out the battery terminals. Also, don't smoke or use open flame around batteries. The battery could explode. Make certain that the battery is secured to the APU frame and that the battery hold-down bracket is properly installed. Visually inspect the battery casing for cracks or leaks and look for broken, burned, or corroded terminals. Check the APU control box for secure mounting and corrosion. Ensure that the APU throttle control and start switch is operating properly without binding or sticking. Now turn the APU on. Remember, always wear ear protection when inspecting the APU while it's running or serious injury could result. Hearing protection is required within 10 feet of the APU anytime it's running. Also, remember never to open any fluid tank during operation or while it's under pressure or severe burns could result. Make sure the APU responds to the throttle control. Check for excessive or discolored smoke or fluid leaks. Then, leave the APU running. The before operation PMCS on the semi-trailer concludes with checks of the hydraulics. Inspect the hydraulic control module for leaks, obvious defects, and secure mounting. Make sure the control valve handles operate freely without binding or sticking. Check the hydraulic pressure gauges for leaks, defects, and secure mounting and make certain the gooseneck isolation valve and suspension shutoff valve handles are pushed in. Inspect the area around hydraulic pressure filter assembly for leaks. Then continue your checks on the right side of the tractor. As you did on the left side, inspect the right side exterior for damage. Look underneath for fluid leaks and check the tires for underinflation. Then check the front of the tractor for damage and leakage.
When you have completed your checks on the exterior of the truck, before Operation PMCS must continue inside the cab. Make certain the fire extinguisher is present and undamaged. Check the gauge for proper pressure of about 150 PSI. Make sure the mounting is secure. And check for a damaged or missing seal. You should also check all seat belts for security, completeness, and proper operation. This is also a good time to check the operation of the seat adjustment mechanisms. The next few checks require that the engine switch be placed in the on position. Be sure to wear hearing protection when the tractor engine is running. Okay. As soon as you do this, the check engine and check gauges lights will come on for about six seconds and should then go off. Run the engine at idle for five minutes to allow the engine to warm. Check to make sure the engine has a correct idle of 600 to 700 RPM. Using your operator's manual as a guide, check all gauges on the instrument panel for proper readings, including the oil pressure gauge, water temperature gauge, air cleaner restriction indicator, air pressure gauge, battery gauges, transmission temperature gauge, transfer case temperature gauge, and fuel gauge. Press the engine brake retarder on-off switch to on, and press the high-low switch to high. Then accelerate the engine to about 1800 RPM. Listen for the decompression of the engine. Then press the high-low switch to low and check operation. Next, check the operation of the central tire inflation system, the CTIS. Slowly press down on the accelerator pedal. Set the CTIS rotary switch to the appropriate position. Press the start switch and hold for one second. The CTIS rotary selector switch should always match the lighted terrain flashing green light. If the switch and lighted settings do not match, operators should refer to their technical manual. Also, check the drive line control for proper operation. Check the transfer case operation in both high and low ranges. Check the transmission for proper operation in all ranges. Next, the assistant makes sure the chock blocks are removed. Then the operator checks the brakes by moving the tractor forward approximately 60 feet and steadily applying the brake pedal. The truck should stop smoothly without noticeable side pull or vibration. Then with the truck stopped and in gear, release the brake pedal. The brakes should release immediately and allow the head to roll forward. Next, with the vehicle stopped, check the trailer brakes by applying the trailer handbrake control only and then attempting to move the tractor and trailer combination. The truck should not move. When the before operation checks and services are completed, the head is ready to go on its mission. While you're operating the tractor and trailer, there are still many important checks and services that must be made. During operation, you need to keep a check on the instrument panel inside the tractor. Check the windshield washer and wiper controls for proper operation. Sound both the electrical horn and the air horn to make sure they work. Listen for air dryer discharge when system air pressure reaches about 120 PSI. Continually monitor all gauges for proper operation. Listen for unusual engine noises, rough idle or misfiring. Also check for unusual steering noise. And notice if there is any binding or difficulty in turning. During recovery operations, wenches must be inspected for loose parts, hydraulic leaks, 
and obvious external damage. Make sure the winch controls operate properly. Inspect the winch cables for kinks, frays, and breaks. And check the winches for missing or damaged pins. During Operation PMCS is also important on the semi-trailer. You'll need to watch, feel, and listen to the semi-trailer and its related components while they are actually being operated. Several steps from the before Operation PMCS should be repeated during operations, including inspecting the cable guide rollers, the davit assembly, and the APU control box. You also need to make sure the suspension assemblies are operational. Then check the semi-trailer tire and wheel assemblies in case of possible multiple tire and wheel failures. Look at the position of the indicator on the hydraulic pressure filter assembly. It should read in the green zone. If it reads yellow, the element should be replaced as soon as possible. Checks and services after operation are just as important as before and during operation, if not more so. Once you've finished after operation PMCS, the vehicle is essentially ready for its next mission. Any damage or mishaps will already have been reported and steps taken for repair so that when the mission calls, you are prepared to respond. Again, checks should begin at the left side of the tractor. First, the transmission fluid needs to be checked. Make sure the engine is still running and the transmission is in neutral. It's also important to make sure the parking brake is set or personal injury can result. Check the transmission fluid level on the dipstick. If the level is too low, add fluid. If it's too high, notify unit maintenance. After this check, turn the engine off. Check the fuel water separator for water in the bowl. If there is water, drain the fuel tank until only pure fuel is flowing out of the hose. Remember that fuel is very flammable and can explode easily. Then check the left side wheel hubs for warmth and obvious damage. Be sure to use caution because the hubs can get hot enough to burn and cause injury. Just like you did in your before operation PMCS, Check the tires for cuts, gouges, and cracks. Listen for the sound of air system leaks around the air reservoirs. Pull three cables by the battery box to discharge all moisture. Again, check the left side and rear exterior for obvious damage. Continuing around the semi-trailer, it's important to repeat some of the before PMCS and during PMCS steps, such as inspecting the steps and guard rails checking the sediment bowl on the fuel filter assembly and inspecting the gooseneck pivot cylinders. Pull and hold each of the five air tank drain cock lanyards until moisture is no longer being discharged. Again, the suspension system needs to be inspected as well as the tires and wheels, the steering installation, hydraulic control module, and hydraulic pressure filter assembly and make sure the gooseneck isolation and suspension shutoff valves are in the run position. After PMCS continues on the right side of the tractor, as you did on the left side, check the tractor tires, wheel hubs, and air reservoirs. Also, check the mounting and condition of the spare tire. Check the power steering reservoir fluid. Add fluid if the level is low. Notify maintenance if it's over full. And check the reservoir hoses, lines, and fittings for leaks or damage. As you did before operation, check the front of the tractor for damage and look under it for leaks. After allowing the engine to cool, check the engine oil level. If the level is low, add oil. If the engine is over full, notify unit maintenance. You'll need an assistant for the final checks. Check the headlights, blackout drive lights, clearance lights, running lights, brake lights, turn signals, reflectors, and backup lights, making sure all lights work properly. Then check the operation of the beacon light, 
emergency flashers, work lights, dome light, and map lights. Look for damage and presence of lenses for the running lights, turn indicators, and brake lights. Make sure the reflectors are present and undamaged. Preventive maintenance checks and services before, during, and after operation, an essential part of the safe and smooth functioning of the heavy equipment transporter system. By following procedures, paying attention to warnings, and using common sense, the HET can remain ready to respond whenever and wherever it's needed.